Hey guys, welcome back to Thronefall. Today we're playing the new map, Stromcom, which I was excited to see when I came back. Uh, I'd finished all the maps in the game and I'd done a couple hundred percent, so it was awesome to see a new map. Here's the perks we're using. We have Warhorse, which gives you damage when you ride over people. We have Glass Cannon, which gives you plus 80% damage, but you have 66% less health. And we have Faster Research, so for Blacksmith and the Royal Upgrade, it costs one less gold and we research quicker. Uh, as you can see, Glass Cannon makes me die pretty quick, so I'm going to do some researching to try and give me some more health ASAP. Uh, first night, no problem, I can deal with it myself with a bit of help from the town center, and I got some houses to give me some more research. And there you go, one of the first things I buy on day two is the Royal Upgrade Center, and I do the plus 50% health. Over here, there's a new type of enemies that are like mole guys, they can just tunnel directly to where uh, they want to attack, but they take extra damage from defensive towers. I kill quite a few of them and then uh, they manage to get me though, but the tower is able to take them out and we don't lose anything, which is awesome. Uh, this new map is cool because people wanted a little bit smaller map, you know, like the desert map for example is really spread out and people wanted a small map that was easy to fight and contain and I think they did a really nice job. You can almost see the entire map from where you're fighting and it makes a kind of a different type of battle, a little bit more close quarters. Again, you can see we spawn in, we don't have our plus health yet, and we just get ganked instantly. Luckily we have our special perk which uh, heals and you deal more damage, but I still manage to die. Our towers, tower is helping us out, we're killing, and all the spearmen are dead, so now we're able to wipe out all the archers, no problem. These guys were walking around, but thankfully our tower was shooting them while they were walking trying to get to it, so... I don't think we lost too much. The archer was able to kill one of our fields, which is a little bit annoying, but it's only a coin of income, so it doesn't matter. With that, we're on to day four. You can see that there's a bunch of flying critters uh, coming, both from the north and the west. So I decided to buy some archers just because you know you need them to defend. I bring them up to the top because I don't want to lose my town center, obviously, and I buy a few towers along with an upgrade for the center. I decided to go for the plus health uh, bonus. Again, I think it's 150 health just because I'm so weak. As you saw, I died so quickly so many times. I'm just trying to alleviate that. These big guys are called wasps and they like to target buildings. And as you can see, they do some pretty serious damage. I think three shots destroyed the Royal Upgrade Center and it was like six shots to destroy a tower. Our archers are trying to help out, and a couple of them die, so then I go in and start trying to uh, lure their bullets so my units stay alive. They kill quite a few of my houses, but we do manage to get them, which is good. And now day 5. I'm upgrading all of my houses to level 2, just for a bit more income. And... I figure I need some more defenses now because there's more enemies spawning from the south and you can see they're the mole types too but instead of a sword those are actually the mole archers which is interesting. And as you can see on this side it's super easy for me to go over and deal with them. They don't spawn that quick, they barely deal any damage and just like that they're already all gone. My defenses on the other side were doing an okay job of defending them. We didn't lose too much, but if any more enemies were to spawn, we'd be in trouble, like this realm. I decided to upgrade the explosive mill here. I don't even bother buying any fields because I know it's not going to last the night. And the other thing we buy is two of these shrines here. So these shrines are a new thing for this map, and if you get enough kills in a radius of them, they start giving you two gold per day, and they activate like a tower and they shoot enemies. And the most important thing is they can't actually be attacked, which is good because as you'll see, like a lot of the towers that spawn, they just get destroyed. Especially some of the ones that spawn without uh, a fence protecting them or whatever. So these shrines are actually pretty important to help you defend. You can see we get some catapult spawning and they just absolutely destroy your buildings quickly. I was pretty low on health, so I decided to leave and go to the left where there's a few less enemies. But of course that means the catapults are able to destroy all my defenses and then the units can walk in. Thankfully though I don't die when I do all this, so I'm doing pretty good. And now it's just a few giants left. I go over and try and get the stragglers. And now it's just three walking up the causeway. Kind of like Helm's Deep, honestly. We have the tower and our town center dealing with them. And as you can see I'm still not dealing that much damage to them. I decide again I want uh, more health, so I go for the additional armor, plus 50% health, 
and there's witches spawning in the north so I decide I need as many towers as I can get. I also buy the armory here but I accidentally click it too much so I don't know what I bought. So I just do a quick restart to do it and I decide to go for the plus 20 range damage and then I just do exactly what I did before, just buy some more towers. I also buy some fire archers and put them on the southern line just because it looks like there's a lot of enemies coming up the center causeway and the fire archers are just absolutely awesome for killing uh, the big groups of enemies that get stuck before the gates because it just deals so much damage with the splash. With that we're on to night 7. There's these mole warriors spawning over here so again I don't feel like investing in more defenses over here so I just go over here to damage them myself and as you can see there's not a whole lot happening. They come one at a time and by the time I kill one the next one comes and they've hardly dealt any damage to me so it's not too much of a challenge. Over to the east, I'm hoping that the witches are being killed by the archers we set up there along with the towers and then the fire archers are holding the middle line. I go over to check and as you can see they just managed to broken through but they hadn't even killed anything so it was perfect timing and everything was well designed. There's no enemy spawning over here so I decided to upgrade the farm and give me some more fields just for some hopefully more money. And now there's like these like chukono looking things which are, uh, it's a Chinese invention and it's almost like a shotgun of crossbows. And so it's this giant barrel that a whole bunch of uh, arrows shoot out of in a rapid fashion which is a, another new enemy which is interesting. I decide to buy a few more towers, a few more defenses, I move all my units around to the south and I find a couple more houses I can upgrade or purchase. And now we're ready for battle. And here you see what they look like, it's like these giant rotating tubes, and again, of course, I just die immediately. The explosive mill killed a few units, which was cool, and now all the spearmen, which are the ones dealing a lot of damage to me, were up to the north, so I was able to kill the uh, siege units. Over here, the siege units are all isolated, so I go in, but they kill me instantly again. Luckily, all our units are helping out, and then by the time I'm back, I'm able to go in their rear again and actually kill them without dying once more. And now you can see day 9, there's a whole bunch of enemies coming from the south. I could decide to go again for another uh, damage upgrade one for my ranged units, and then I go for the castle up upgrade, which just reduces the cost of towers and gates by one, as long as they're upgraded. I mean, because just with a few nights, you know, it's day 9, there, this goes to day 13, so 3 or 4 nights, that saves you like... You know, 40 gold with all the towers we have everywhere which gives you so, a lot more damage so I'm a big fan of it. Now we have our shrine over here so we can actually get some kills on these mole guys and as you can see the green bar is filling up and once it gets to full it will actually start functioning as a mini tower and there you go and you can see it's actually shooting quite rapidly which is great so maybe next time if I play this map I might try and get uh, some of these shrines earlier and dealing some more damage because they do also give you some income. I go in and I get super low but I just managed to come out with enough health. I don't have my secondary ability up yet so I can't get any fast healing. I'm just kind of running around and I go in, I activate it but I still was a bit too low so I die. My units are dealing some good damage though and I spawn just in time to clean up the few enemies that are left. We got a nice income of almost 40 coins, which is good. Lots of things we can buy. I decided to buy more shrines because as you saw, they're pretty useful and I'm sure enemies will eventually get here. I'm upgrading all of my towers to the next level just because they have a bit more health, but more importantly, more damage. I also buy some Viking units, which I like because they go uh, balls deep for the siege units, which is good. <clears throat> I also have the max level town center so I can upgrade my fields to the maximum level and each fields give you six coins instead of two which is quite a big increase. I upgrade my fire archers again and then spread them around just because you can see all the enemies are coming up the center and yeah they're going to be dealing a lot of damage. So the fire archers are great just for their splash damage because you can see they all get caught up right on the fences there and then by the time they get to the gate they're basically dead. I spawn again, I deal a bit of damage and I just die. Luckily, I'm not the important one here, it's my units that are killing everything. And all they managed to do there is break the gate, so no real damage was done. 
the enemies are all spawning in the north. So I decided it's a safe bet to upgrade my farm there because I'm sure I'll get the income. And now there's a lot of people coming from the north. So I move all my archers up. I spread them around because a lot of times these enemies deal splash damage. And so you want to have your units separate so they don't die. I buy as many towers as I can. I upgrade a few that seem good. And I think we're ready to go. You can see the units like to bunch up, so I start spreading them around a little bit. And there's quite a few enemies from the north. You can see they're dealing some good damage. A lot of them are dying, but now all of my towers are starting to die. So I start pulling some units back because I don't want them to die because if I lose these guys, I might actually be in trouble. Then I go up north and I just start baiting shots. And this is the one thing that's nice if you have the bow or the lightning rod to deal damage. Because then you can actually help during these flying days. As of right now, I'm just sitting there and not even really looking pretty. You can see they pretty much destroyed the whole northern bit, a lot of houses, all the upgrade centers. But that's okay, we made it through and we have 99 coins to spend on stuff, so I think we're going to be okay. I buy a golem. I buy some more flail units, I upgrade a few of my towers, I like to upgrade to the siege towers just because those have a little bit more range and try to kill the catapults, which as you saw a couple nights ago, if they're left unchecked just absolutely destroy all of your buildings and then you know if you lose your buildings then the spearmen and stuff can start causing you trouble. And that's another reason why I like buying the viking melee units, just anything you can to destroy those units is helpful, especially because of the way I built my map. I just spend my time over on the left dealing with the units that spawn there and I let my units and buildings defend the south side. Nothing spawns over in the west though, so I decide to come and help. We destroy a few of these siege units, I go over and look, oh, and I see they start spawning, so I go through our little gold mine, through the mountain, and as you can see they're spawning super slow, so they're not dealing much damage, and I figure my turrets and shrines can help with that, so I go over to deal with some more heavy damage zones, whole bunch of spawning in the south, but we deal some pretty good damage with our spear and kill a lot. I drag my units behind the gate because I don't want them getting damaged because I look like they were just about to get there. I go check on the western side again, everything's died, no problem, and I'm looking where's the weakest and it looks like it's east because the moles actually went through and they're destroying the towers, so I go in to see if I can save it. No, but we do manage to kill all the units over there, so it's okay. All the siege units are dead, which is good, and that's another reason to buy those siege towers, and now it's just these spearmen and stuff trying to get through the gates, but they hardly deal any damage, so it's no real biggie. I was surprised that the night didn't end there, so I decided, well, where are these enemies be coming from? So I realized it must be the west, so I go over there, and again, just like the other knights, they don't come fast enough, it's no real trouble, and we just absolutely gank them. We go from 29 coins up to 100, so pretty good. 72 coin income and we're on to the last night as you can see i went to the pause screen and i looked and it's uh the statues that are actually coming to life which is an interesting you know it's like the uh water map with the thing in the middle of the lake that you don't realize is actually going to be enemy just like these statues i upgrade all my towers a variety you know i have the split arrows i do one for the burning burning oil i upgrade lots of my towers because you know you never know what's going to happen uh, who knows how crazy these guys are going to be and if they get up to the top, you don't want them destroying your citadel. I spread my units around and I'm like, okay, let's go. And you can see these guys are actually the mole dudes that tunnel and go wherever they want, which they introduced to you in this map. So it's kind of cool that the final bosses are the new unit. I get low and I try to run away, but I get caught on the hill and again, I die. You can see the shrine in the west there was putting in work. Our units over here are putting in work. These two guys are, you know, 75% health, which isn't too bad. The mill blows up and does almost nothing. This guy in the middle is getting hit by a lot of towers. Unfortunately, he did manage to kill all of my archers. I pull back, I try to get my healing up. I do, we do a bit of damage, it's not too bad. And now they're all centralized. Again, I'm just trying to pull my archers back, keep them alive in the fight. And right here is when I kind of started getting a little bit worried, especially when I died. Because all four of them are still alive, three of them are at half health, and one of them is almost dead. 
but my archer spawning units are all dead. All I have left is my fire guys, and I'm trying to get over to move my archers and save them, but I got ganked by this other guy again, and so now all my archers are dead too. Then you see these guys, they just tunnel up to my main area and start destroying the thousands. They're all pretty low now, so I wasn't sure, but I mean, if they all decided to go for the town center, I might actually have been in trouble. Again, with glass cannon, it's so hard to stay alive, especially if you're trying to deal lots of damage. That's like the fourth time I've died on the boss round, but it's okay. Uh, these two guys in the south, they decide to go their own way, and as you can see in the top right, we kill our second one, and they just explode with these giant chunks. The shrine's putting in crazy damage against the guy to the west, and he dies too, and then the guy in the middle is there. I'm not even alive when we beat the boss, but it was kind of close, you know, it could have gone, but we still got it, no problem. And that was the new map, Strumkom. I really liked it, I had a good time, and we got the second quest done too. That's why we did the load we did. Alright, thanks for watching guys.